Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Come on and slam. <clears throat> oh, just, just wait until we have the Rainmaker version of this map. Dunking? Dunking the Rainmaker? <sighs> anyway, welcome to the map mode of the day. We're going to be doing Gobi Arena Tower Control today. As always, the map modes of the day are voted on by my patrons on Patreon. Would really appreciate your support there. It'll give you the ability to choose which ones of these I prioritize, but also just to keep the channel running into Splatoon 3 and have this resource available for all the new players we're going to see at that time. Really appreciate that. Even if you can't support on Patreon, like and a subscription to the channel does a lot for us, and I would really appreciate that as well. Let's get on with it. We've already talked about Gobi Arena for Clam Blitz, but tower control is a different mode. It's going to work in a different way. And we have to talk about the objective in a somewhat different way as well. As with all of the tower control maps, we have our objective line already written on screen for us. I do not have to draw anything. You can just see it's right there in orange. That is the path that the objective has to travel. And so that determines everything that needs to happen in the match. When you're at first checkpoint, when you're on this point, your frontliners need to be controlling this kind of space to keep the checkpoint safe. And then when you get to the second checkpoint, it's a different radius. It's a little bit further into the enemy base that needs to be kept safe and so on and so forth all the way out. You're going to continue keeping a radius of control around the tower as you go forward in order to protect it. If the defensive team is able to get into that radius, that gives them line of sight on the tower rider that lets them try to clear it. And that needs to be dealt with by the pushing team as quickly as possible, or they're going to lose the tower push and it's going to start resetting. Map control is of course always a factor in this. So it's not just a matter of having the opponents pushed back. It's also a matter of painting up the further forward you push so that the enemy team takes longer to get back into position if they win on defense and so that it's easier for your team to move around and find advantages as they push up. Pretty standard stuff there. Let's talk about weapon rolls right away. Remember, as the Slayer or Skirmisher, your goal is to push your point as far forward on the objective line as you can. So if the tower is in mid, your job is to get control of this area so that there is nothing in that area to threaten the tower as it pushes forward on the objective line. As the Slayers and Skirmishers, you are specifically paying attention to the zones around checkpoints because checkpoints are very vulnerable positions where the tower has to stop dead in its tracks for a little while and it gives the enemy team a pretty good long time to set up their shots and try and take out those players. On the first checkpoint, you need a pretty wide area of control around it because this whole area right here is really dangerous to the tower. There are plenty of situations that you'll see in my matches where players are able to stop a tower push by taking this high ground here and either dropping directly onto the tower, which is possible from this location, or shooting down at it from range and making it difficult, making the opponents have to look this direction while someone sneaks in from behind it or from the front and is able to stop it that way. So it's an especially wide radius that you need as the frontliners to be able to keep the tower safe. Um, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but tower riders will be talking about how you might need to reconsider when you try to push if your frontliners have not managed to secure this area yet. You generally always want to have at least one frontliner sweeping in this way and clearing this all out. This is just too important and too good of a position to defend the tower from, and it has really good access to other areas of the map as well. From here, you can move directly onto the platform where the second checkpoint is, and that's the obvious play that the defending team should be looking for. But you also have access to this jump right here. Jumping across to there gets you into the enemy base, and you can sweep back around and take out this defensive stronghold, which is a really powerful position to defend the third checkpoint from or you can get up on top here, which gives you high ground over everything on the map and allows you to clean a lot of different things up. Those are some really powerful directions that you can go from this point right here. 
And since you're going to have to sweep through here and clear that all out anyway, that's a really good idea for a frontliner to have. Another idea for a frontliner is to either jump from the tower directly up onto this platform and then push in front of it from there, or there is a block right here. You can jump up onto this block, up from this block onto this platform, and then use that to jump over to the other side. So those are all ideas for how to get around. It is possible for you to flank around in this direction. That's generally a little bit less favorable because the tower is on the top side of the map and this keeps you on the bottom side for a very long time. But it is a potential way that you get in behind them right here or right here. It's just like we've said before, you can also get there by pushing around in this direction. And so usually people will just go for this if they're looking for those locations or just get on the tower and then hop over from the tower because those are much faster ways to get to the same place. At second checkpoint, this is really do or die. Um, this checkpoint's extremely important because the enemy team, if they let it get through here, they let the tower move to a place where it has more cover, where there are fewer sight lines for the enemy team to get on it. Out here, it's very exposed. There's no cover anywhere around. But right here, you can hug the wall here and make it difficult for them to get shots on you. And it's also just out of line of sight of somebody who's over here now. They have to peek a lot harder in this direction and expose themselves more to the frontliners to be able to get anything done there. Also, there's some awkward elevation changes that happen as the tower rides up here, which can make it a little bit more difficult to hit moving targets on top of the tower. So right here is really the ideal place for them to stop the tower. And it's also probably the most difficult checkpoint to defend on the map because it's so difficult to access this location. This area down here really doesn't matter once the tower goes up. Sure, it's good to have in case you need to abandon ship and get back down into mid, but in terms of keeping the tower pushing forward, you need this radius out here in front of you, which means you need to be out in front of the tower, not behind it, like you will be if you just watch the tower go up in front of you. This right here is elevation change. This means that at a certain point, the tower has gone high up enough that you cannot jump on it and get to the other side again. And then you're going to have to go for maybe this jump, which is relatively slow compared to the tower moving up. You're going to want to already have been pushed up here. You're behind the play if the tower is going up and you're still at ground level here. And so that means you are forced to make some kind of play to get over to this side. And that's something that the enemy team is going to be watching out for if they're smart. This right here is the angle of approach that it's most common to try and defend as the defending team. And uh, you got to be careful that they don't just put a bomb or put shots pre-firing those jumps. You are a little bit safer from this angle right here as long as you hug the wall. So definitely make sure to do that when you're trying to make this jump. But you've just got to know if there's somebody right here who's ready to shoot you as soon as you land, because that can shut this down in a hurry. A lot of the time as the attacking team, this particular juncture right here for the tower, you might need to drop off it a couple of times and let the tower return to you in mid and give your frontliners a little bit more time to clear this area out so that the tower can actually get up there and start scoring realistically. Once you get past the second checkpoint, they're in a lot of trouble. This, that's usually a winning push because this whole area right here is always a good spot on this map for a frontliner to shark and get picks. It's really difficult to push them out of here because you're walking around corners blind. Um, you're dropping down into someone who might be sharking you if you're coming from that direction. And there aren't a lot of angles from here that actually give you good line of sight on what's going on in this direction. So your frontliners can kind of just swarm around in this area and take like full control of that part of the map. And it's only a matter of time before someone gets to sneak in this way or someone gets to sneak out this way or somebody goes from the tower and jumps over onto here. There are a lot of options at this point in time for how to get control of the map uh, using this as a staging ground. And so at that point, unless you have like overwhelming firepower right here with good line of sight on the tower, it's difficult for the enemy team to defend it at all. The only way once you get through third checkpoint to defend the tower is head on from the front. Because if you were up here, 
you probably could have just cleared the third checkpoint and stopped them from getting through that. So you're probably not up here if it gets through there. And if you're not up there, the only direction you have from spawn is to run straight at the tower, which is the most obvious place to go, and they have a bunch of cover. They've got the pole in the middle of the tower. They can drop down behind the tower and just let the tower shield all of the shots for them. And you can't really come in from an off angle from like this direction or from this direction because there are walls there and you need to climb over the top of those walls and you probably don't have time. So the, the game will snowball once you get through second checkpoint, very much in the same way that it will on Black Belly, but not quite as indefensibly. If you can get it through that second checkpoint, you're going to get a lot of points and that's potentially a winning push. So make that your primary goal. And the way to do that is to lock down this area completely, get somebody over onto this side in time to clear it out and protect the tower when it gets to this position, and from there, you should have your pickings of flank angles that you want to take. Supports. Supports are, like we said, generally going to be tower riders. Make sure even while you're riding tower, you are still doing things like paint and throw bombs and use specials. Painting on this map is huge because all of this area in mid is pretty darn empty. It's all very paintable, it's all very flat. And so the only advantage that you're really able to win yourself in mid is a paint advantage. You don't have a lot of cover to work with. You're just going to have to rely on what your main weapon can do and how much movement and vision you have because of how well painted it is. So one of the key important parts of breaching, especially the second checkpoint, but even the first one, is having map control locked in, painted up, up to about here. Because if you have this, that enables your team to keep making attempts to push the tower because your opponents aren't actually pushing them back very far even if they have to drop off the tower for a second. If they have to drop off the tower into enemy paint behind them, that's a huge problem. That means that pushing the tower is a much bigger risk and you're going to lose more resources for trying to do it. But if you get to the first checkpoint and you realize, okay, it's not safe, and you just drop off but you have your own ink over here, the enemy team hasn't regained control of the tower yet, you're just getting off temporarily and stalling it so that you can get back on when it's safer and the frontliners have had more of a chance to clean them out. Same kind of thinking applies to second checkpoint. If you've got paint up here and you're able to drop off into that paint and suddenly vanish, then the enemy team isn't really in control of the tower yet. They still need to push you out of there, they still need to unpaint all of this, and then they can really focus their attention on making sure that tower has stopped pushing. So it's really, really important, especially in mid here, to maintain paint control of all of this as the support player. Make sure also that you are timing your specials so that when it's time to get through these important choke points, especially this stretch of the tower push right here, which is the most vulnerable one, that you're using all of your resources at that time that it is when your team needs help the most that you are giving the most help. As the tower rider, like I've said, be ready to just drop off the tower and give it up for a second while your frontliners take more time to push up. Because the tower moving backwards is not a huge deal, especially if it's at second checkpoint and you drop off. If it's at second checkpoint and you drop off the tower and it comes back down, cool. Now you can get back on the tower again, as opposed to where it was when it was up here, when you actually didn't have access to it and you would have had to get up on the box and do this jump like the frontliners did. Dropping off the tower, it'll just kind of boomerang right back to you and you'll be able to get back on it as soon as it's safe to again. So preserve your life if you're the tower rider, you know? Try and make it work until the point where your team is losing control and you just need a few more points to maybe sprint through a checkpoint or get the lead back. You don't need to go and get yourself splatted just for the sake of pushing the tower a few more points. Back it up if you need to, and as you back up, keep the paint control up. Make sure that as your opponents try to rush you down to clear your team out more fully and wipe you, that you still have a good amount of paint left over as they push back in for you to retreat into, for your teammates to use as they respawn back in and come back in to help you. And a lot of the time you can just keep it so that the tower is going back and forth between maybe this area and this area up until you actually get a good enough push ready to go that you can clear the opponents out 
control this zone and get the second checkpoint safely. Once you're getting through to third checkpoint, this is more where you're starting to consider, all right, maybe we should just go all in and get as many points as we can out of this and uh, maybe go down with the tower if that means we get a few extra points. Because we're starting to get into winning points when we talk about this sort of area of the tower path right here. Strongly consider just, hey, I think I can get the last few points on this checkpoint. If you can, go for it. Totally worth it a lot of the time. Backliners. This map gives you a lot of good positions. There are a lot of different pieces of high ground that have angles on a lot of different parts of the map. This whole area up here is a backliner's paradise. Uncontestable high ground, or at least very difficult to contest high ground. If you're up here, they can't reach that unless they go up the hoop all the way around here, jump over here, and then get your back, or if they go to this box and then get your back. And that's pretty easy to spot out from any of those positions. The big concern about being on here is not that players rush you so much as players throw things at you. Bombs are the number one counter to backlines in a lot of situations, but especially up here. If you've got a bomb rush, it's not unheard of to just throw every single bomb onto this location right here to clear it of a pesky backliner and try and deny them all of the space that they need to have control. This is a map where you can run E-Leader. This is a map where you can run Hydra. This is a map where any amount of range is probably going to be helpful because as the objective moves forward, you're still always going to have a place to stand. Being in mid is a great idea as a backliner. Being on this hoop is a great idea as a backliner for offense, for defense, either side. Being up here is a great idea for a backliner. Again, on offense if you're over here, and on defense if you're over here. You can kind of move across the map and follow the tower path pretty completely as you move forward. Um, and Devi even has some pretty aggressive positions where you take up a non-traditional position in a place like this, where you're maybe able to see something happening up here, something happening up here, or something happening up here. Or maybe you're able to help clear out somebody who's in this direction and lock this down. There are just a lot of really good spots because of the elevation change that you see throughout the map. When you get into a really strong position as a team, there are some extremely powerful lockout positions that especially something like a Hydra that Devi plays can take advantage of. If you're able to get frontliners into this position right here and a backliner is able to super jump to them like we talked about in the clams video, this is a lights out position right here. It is so hard to push in against a Hydra who is on this position. This angle doesn't work, this angle doesn't work, this angle doesn't work. And if you're coming in from all the way over here, you're taking a pretty long detour away from the tower only to eventually be in a position where the Hydra can still see you. Really, really scary position. You don't want to let an enemy backliner get into this position. If so, it's going to end the game pretty quickly. This also, similar lockout position. This kind of high ground over the enemy base is really brutal. On defense, like as your team is getting backed up, you have a whole bunch of opportunities for different locations to pop out from and maybe get a pick that slows a push down. This is one of the traditional popular backline positions. Um, this or maybe coming out to the, not quite all the way out to the grate, but maybe using the grate to be able to look down through and see some frontline players in this angle. So this gives you a lot of line of sight over this area, which as we've mentioned with the frontliner section here is pretty crucial. If the left side really matters right now and you haven't been able to get to a very advanced position yet, this place can be pretty good. Um, this is maybe a place to retreat to if the enemy team has stopped you from second checkpoint and your team has been forced back a little bit. From here, you can still maintain control of this side of the map where the tower still is. And it's very difficult for a weapon to push in towards you because you can right side peek around this piece of cover or you can just kind of dip out if you see that coming and don't want anything to do with it. Just walk backwards, hold charge as you're looking backwards in this direction. And if they really try and push you onto the unpaintable turf, you probably have a good shot on them. If you're pushed further back, you can also take a position like this to stop flanks or to clear out this location here of frontliners who might be sharking there. So maybe you've got some players coming in from this direction and this angle helps you clear players out into their line of sight. Also, a good last resort position is right here, which will help you clear this area out if enemy frontliners are starting to impose on that position. 
It also helps you get good line of sight on this area below you, which is pretty disadvantageous for any players that try to push in. And this is a place where your team is going to want to be able to move into to get to the tower. So taking up that position on the top will help you clear this spot so that these players dropping in are safe and can potentially get to the tower and reverse its direction before the KO happens. Key positions. When you are trying to clear first checkpoint, this area right here is going to be of crucial importance, as we've said, and, you know, the hoop and basically everything that's in that vicinity right there, that's really something that needs to get cleared. You don't need an awful lot of this area yet. Um, it's important to make sure you have threat on the players who are standing right here because otherwise they have this angle and potentially this angle to defend from and the tower is attacked from two different directions and it's really hard for someone standing on this tower to deal with both of those at once especially how exposed they are in mid without that much cover and that's on top of the less mainline routes of maybe dropping down here for a flank or dropping down here for a flank which are both very good defensive plays to make especially as a frontliner who can move freely through enemy ink once you've got it through first checkpoint again it's going to be a matter of banging your head against the wall to try and get it through second checkpoint um, the difference between you know first and second checkpoint in terms of what you need to control is pretty huge you need to move your arc from i'd say hereabouts all the way up to extend to this whole area right here with possible threat on these areas here as well. Um, you don't want a backliner to just be able to walk right up to this ledge without being threatened. You want someone to at least be able to like shoot up at them and be like, hey, hey, you should probably not stay there maybe, um, or throw bombs at them or something to at least make them think twice and make the tower rider have half a chance of being able to dodge the one shot that these players can get off before they have to back away. Second checkpoint, this whole area becomes extremely important because this is the only way that players can physically approach the tower and get on top of it and try and reverse it that way. It's also the only way that a short-ranged weapon can reach the tower and splat the tower rider. And it's at that point in time that a backliner is going to start having a little bit more trouble having an impact because this whole box right here is going to get in the way of someone who's trying to shoot from over here with a super long-range backline weapon, and the tower is going to be moving away from them as well. So they're really going to want something that can actually get in here to try and stop it if we're trying to stop it before third checkpoint. Anything with high ground on this map is going to be pretty advantageous. So if you see someone up above you, make sure that you have a plan for dealing with that. I really like using inkjet on this map. Sloshers are gonna be really good on this map for clearing those areas out. Rapid blasters especially are really nasty to deal with. Having a weapon that can throw a lethal bomb at a backliner or something that's up above you that's trying to use its range and its height advantage against you is huge. You need to be able to clear players out of positions that are higher up than you. Main goals. As we've said, first checkpoint you're trying to control about this area here. You need definite control of this so that people don't drop down from the tower. Or if you don't have control of that, then you at least need a significant amount of control of this area so that this is the only direction that the tower needs to look in and vice versa in the other direction. If you have control of this area, that enables you to deal a little bit better with players who are here, because again, the tower rider can pick one side of the tower to sit on and use the pole as cover from the players who are shooting from the direction you don't control. Those two areas, you don't necessarily need to fully control them to get through first checkpoint. You might be able to just have one area cleared out and the other area be a little bit of a hot zone. But once you start getting to second checkpoint, you really cannot afford to have anybody in this arc right here. You need both of them pretty completely under control. You need everybody backed up to maybe this position, this position, this position, this position. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit of trouble and your frontliner is going to have to do some good work to be able to enforce your zone and keep the tower push moving towards that third checkpoint. Once you're at third checkpoint, all bets are off. People are gonna be flanking in from this kind of a direction. People are gonna be sharking in here, especially rollers and rat weapons. Um, so at that point in time, it's on the defending team to you know, post up from a strong position, get the picks that they need very quickly so that they can rush people up the middle and get to the tower before it KOs. On defense, always consider these positions here. 
They are pretty universally helpful in any of the different checkpoint pushes. First checkpoint you can shoot from here. You can drop down from here to flank the tower. You can drop from here to flank the tower. So you have a bunch of different options for how to approach it that way. Once it hits second checkpoint, this location is a, you know, a prime spot. This location is a prime spot to attack the tower from with a little bit more range to throw bombs at it. If you at least control this area right here, even if they get through the checkpoint, they're going to have to think twice about how they're going to get frontliners through. So even if you don't think you can stop the checkpoint, if you're able to keep this area painted your color, there are only so many ways that they have in. You're, there are only so many angles they can take on you. They're going to have to have someone maybe down below throwing bombs up at you to clear you out of those kinds of positions before you're going to give up that zone and let an enemy frontliner get in to try and push you out of the way. That should do it for today's map mode of the day. Thank you everybody for watching. As always, I would appreciate it if you'd consider supporting me on Patreon. Patreon supporters get the ability to choose which map mode of the day I'm going to do next, which order I do them in. If you'd like that, then that's one way that you can get a little bit more input on what content I put out from the channel. But it also will just keep the channel going for a lot longer, and I really appreciate the chance to do that and to build some resources up so that the Splatoon 3 competitive community can be as big and as well resourced as it can possibly be. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscription, and we'll see you for the next one.